you know, just with a small device for a mere fifteen dollars, it can be really dangerous, and it's so easy to use. This content is for educational purposes only. Please read the four points below before you proceed. If you want to use this knowledge, please be aware only to use it on your own possessions. Do not hack anyone that is illegal and you can go to jail. So in this video we're going to talk about the most dangerous hacking gadgets you can get in 2024. I gathered myself quite a lot of things here on my table today. We're going to talk about things like the M1 multi-tool, of course the Flipper Zero and so on. But let's just right start with the first one we're going to talk about. It's not being shipped out yet, you cannot get it yet. If you bought it in the early bird on Kickstarter, the Monster Check M1 it's going to be somewhat like the Flipper Zero, but it's just a faster, more modern version. Uh, I kind of hope that you're going to see the same kind of community racing up programs and and stuff for the Monster Tech M1 multi-tool. But I kind of doubt that it's going to be and have the same kind of popularity that the Flipper Zero will actually have because it was the first on the market. Anyways, I think it's a great thing. It's quite dangerous already. And with this one, you know, you, you get all the things that, you know, is is with these kind of devices. You know, you get like the infrared, the RFID, the NFC, the sub one gigahertz, the hardware hacking, storage, even the GPIO pins possible to input stuff you can buy from AliExpress, you know, the small custom made. This is one a radio signal for mouse jacking, you know, just create a video with that. Check the link description below for the mouse jacking video for, with, with Flipper Zero. So why is this so dangerous, you know? Of course, it is a one-click device. So what I say is dangerous is not how many can use these kind of things. You know, many people can use them. Even, I think my son could probably use these kind of things here. So I think the Monster Tech M1 unit is one of the more dangerous units coming out this year and i'm actually getting one here in july i don't know how fast they're gonna ship it but they are talking about in july so i actually backed this project with 109 dollars so i'm really looking forward to it i'm gonna do a comprehensive video about it comparison with flipper seal when it comes but i still think this is a great thing all right so talking about the next one is the marauder i have one right here it's on my table it's from a guy called Call Me Coco. It is not powered on at the moment. It got a customized antenna. I can just plug in a new one. I can also put in a GPS in the in the top of it. Uh, on the screen, you can see a small video running of the Marauder, and the thing it kind of enabled me to do is to go ahead and run <clears throat> the Marauder software, which is kind of why it says Marauder on the actual unit. The Marauder software is basically, well, the firmware is a Wi-Fi hacking software. Most of the things are, but it could do more than that. It can create some evil portals. It can spam units with different kinds of things. It's handheld. It's kind of powerful. It's a touch display. You know, it's more modern in a way, as you can see in the video. So basically, it's one of the more, uh, I guess, a little more expensive expensive unit to get if you're gonna if you want to buy these kind of things go to callmecoco.com again all links is in the description below it's gonna cost you around 80 to 85 dollars depending on the option you will pick uh there's also other things in his shop you can go check it out you know caps and stuff also a mini marauder which is basically just a small handheld unit it's gonna be i guess it's good for you when you you know sitting in a bus or something in your car and just want to be, you know, a bit anonymous in a way. Well, that is a thing you can do. The bigger unit here, you know, it is kind of big. As you can see, it's in my hand. I have quite large hands, so it's kind of big. It's like an oversized cell phone. As a comparison, you can see this is my iPhone. And it's kind of big, you know. I think this device is also quite dangerous because it is a part of the family, easy to use, one click, it comes pre-installed, you know, and you can just basically use it. 
The third device I'm going to talk about today is called the Crazy Radio PA. I have it right here, actually. It's uh, the 3D printed custom case, a house for it. It's just a small antenna, as you can see here. I'm going to zoom in on it. Um, maybe open image, new tab. Then you can go ahead and check it out. It's a small antenna. What you're going to do with this is basically, well, sniffing on the sub gigahertz signals, on the radio signals. What I used it for is for mouse jacking. I created a video also for my YouTube channel where I actually tested with my wireless mouse I have right here. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. It's the one from Logitech. And the problem with these devices is that they have vulnerable USB unified dongles. Some of them do have, so it's a great way to test for the vulnerability. This device is a bit more advanced to set up because it requires you to flash actual remote firmware with a well, a older version of Python 2.7. Uh, so for most people, if you don't have any advanced experience with Linux, it's going to be a bit difficult for you to flash it. But if you cannot do that, basically go ahead and buy yourself a radio signal GPIO module and just plug it into your flipper serial. And then you can install firmware like Extreme and basically you're good to go. It can do the same thing. I would like to think that this device here is a bit more fertilized uh, because it can have a bigger range and also a higher customizability. The fourth device that I put in the most dangerous device list is make your own bad USB. Now, we all know Space Home. If you follow him, you know he's going to create a lot of different kind of things, um, create a lot of good penetration software and penetration testing software again for us in the community and most of his work is actually there for you for free to use I'm gonna go ahead and buy yourself one of those digi sparks small pins i'm actually getting three uh, soon so i'm gonna create some video about how to create the uh, bad usb myself i'm gonna use his guide right here actually and i want to send my credit to him so link description below to space in also go ahead and check out his shop you can go ahead and check the shop out there the store and you can buy many different kind of things i'm actually thinking about buying things from his uh, store here because it's kind of cheap he does high quality testing for software uh, devices iot devices and he's a really good you know guy in the field so definitely something that i would go ahead and check out for you okay so the fifth one is going to be the m5 families also the sixth one the first one is going to be the stick and the, the seventh one is going to be the m5 core you know i have both of them right here and you can also see the video running you know we have the m5 core on the stick it's kind of double the size the core the power behind these is that you can you know flash firmware on them you can either flash, you know, evil portal firmware or minimal raw or different kind of things on them running. So you can, for pretty cheap money, get yourself something that is almost as similar to this kind of device right here, which is the uh, Big Marauder from Just Call Me Coco. If you want to go ahead and use this, you're going to go ahead and download the M5 Call Burner. I have it open right here. The power behind it is that you're just going to uh, put your device with a normal USB-C stick, most of them is USB-C, and it's going to recognize it and, and put it to some COM or something port. Um, then you can go ahead and search your device, whether it's a call 2 or call 3 or it's a stick, you're not going to see a small image. And then basically just go ahead and type the software you want, the evil portal test, evil portal M5. And it says like not C plus and stuff, so go ahead and do yourself a favor and check on behind of it, the small one here. Mine is a C plus 1.1. Not sure if you can see that right here, but it's quite possible that you're gonna get one that is not the plus. So please pay attention to and read the text. It's quite easy to search software up. If you're gonna go ahead and get the call one, you can also go ahead and type evil and go to the evil M5 call which is also a Wi-Fi pen testing, ethical hacking, exploration, whatever tool. And it's quite easy to use. And it's just basically, if you haven't downloaded it, you, know, you will see the blue download button. You're just going to press burn and that's it really. One click wonder works every time. Um, another great content on the list is going to be the Flipper Zero because it's still just the multi-tool device for geeks. 
the Flipper series is going to be enabling you to do so many different kinds of things, working with the radio signals, you know, sub gigahertz, RFID text, NSC, the whole GPI hole, the big community behind it. It's one of the more dangerous devices, sure it is, but there are things in common. I'm gonna round off and talk about at the end of the video what the common thing about these devices are. It's gonna be the Ponagotchi, which I also have <clears throat> right here on my shelf. And the Ponagotchi is the device for you to automatically pwn Wi-Fi networks. When I say pwn Wi-Fi networks, it doesn't mean it's gonna hack anything. What it really does is just uh, automatically de-authenticate the client and then basically capture the four-way handshake, the nounces in a cryptid, you know, encrypted form or state. You can go ahead and brute force that at a later time. If the client is using WPA3, the whole idea behind brute forcing passwords has been mitigated and doesn't work anymore. So this device as all the other devices also have in common when you do Wi-Fi testing, you rely heavily on people not using WPA3 because it's not really going to do you much good if they are. So the devices that are probably the most evil devices of them all is going to be the Crazy Radio and of course the Flipper Zero with the extension module from in the, in the GPIO pins where you can do mouse jacking. You know, please go ahead and check out the links below in the description where I link to my videos with mouse jacking for both Flipper Zero and the normal crazy radio. It basically the same thing, but it looks different and it feels different if you are the one doing it. You know, it's gonna be two different kind of feels you're gonna get from it. So routing off from all of this is, um, these devices are all basically more or less Wi-Fi devices and Wi-Fi can only do that much. Evil portal, great thing. If you can trick people to click on it, you can get the passwords for whatever kind of thing. And that is kind of serious enough because if you can get people's Wi-Fi passwords or just the password for their email account, you know, the email account itself is going to be a lot more dangerous than the Wi-Fi because you can get access to the email, you can probably reset passwords and read and follow and, and you know, basically follow up on their work and get steal all their secrets really. So that's really dangerous. I wanna say that this video is here for me to bring forth to you the general idea behind what is on the market and what can we do. I have more things I could show you. I also have the de-author watch and different kind of things. You can even get the five gigahertz, you know, antenna that is here for you to do actual brute forcing or the authentication of five gigahertz networks. The reason that there's not that many five gigahertz network for you to brute force or de-authenticate would be the right way to say it is because the signal is kind of diminishing really fast whenever it meets some sort of, you know, wall or something. So that is why 2.4 gigahertz, which is also a video I have on my channel, which I'm also linking to in the description below where you can learn about what is the difference between 2.4 gigahertz networks and 5 gigahertz networks. So this is more like a educational video where I talk about what's out there and this is what's out there is quite dangerous. So really hope you learned something from the video. And basically, if you feel like subscribing to my channel, click the button subscribe, like the video, click the small bell to get notifications, write some comment below, you know, I will definitely get back to you and see you again online. Have a really nice day and stay safe out there.